Okay, so let's start. So good morning, everybody. Uh, so last time I started to explain the data rate limits. So last time I told you we, uh, here um, there, there are two formula, formulas. One formula is called Ny Ny Nyquist for a noiseless channel. The other one is called Shannon for noise channel. So actually these two formulas are gonna give you the bit rate, bit rate, okay? So uh, in two different ways. So let's start with the first one. The first one here, as I told you, uh, it is for noiseless channel. You should understand there is no channel that is that's noiseless. All all its channels have noise. That okay? Uh, but or, so still, this formula is useful because this formula is gonna give you a limit, a limit for for the bit rate. You got what I'm saying? What I mean by limit, I mean you cannot get this bit rate. It has to be less than this one. But at least you have some idea about it, what is the maximum bit rate you can get. Because this is for noise channels. You got what I'm saying? Because of the noise, the bit rate I'm gonna get is gonna be less than the bit rate uh, I have here in this formula. So in the first formula here, as you see, the bit rate is actually double the bandwidth times look to look to L. L here is actually the number of levels I have, how many levels we have here, okay? So actually this formula is similar to the formula I explained before, but this one is more is, is a general one. So what I explained before here is actually, yeah, here, what I explained here is actually the bit, the bit rate is actually double the bandwidth, double the bandwidth, okay? So, but this, this was for, we, how many, we have only two levels here, okay? But the formula I'm gonna teach, teach right now is general formula. So I'm gonna show you, this is actually similar. This is just a special case of this formula. So if I come to this formula here, and I just, I just put L here is equal to two, so look, look two of two is actually one. So here the bit rate is double the bandwidth. Is that okay? So what this formula is telling me is that uh, if if you if you want a higher bit rate, so actually you either increase the bandwidth or you increase the uh, the signal uh, level. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot increase the level too much. Okay. S simply because the more levels you have, the receiver is gonna be too complicated. The receiver is not gonna be able to differentiate between the different levels. So there is a practical uh, restrictions on how many levels we can we can have, okay? So, uh, and actually it, it makes sense. Why when I have several levels, the bit rate is gonna be high, simply because if you have only two levels, so here one level is gonna become zero, one level is one. So every time it's not, I'm gonna transmit only one bit. But if you have here in this example, if you have four levels here, actually in every time it's not here, we are gonna transmit two bits, okay? That's why as, a, as, a, as, as we have more number of levels, the bit rate is gonna be higher. So I give you here a very straightforward example, okay? So here I'm telling you we have noises channel. I'm giving you the bandwidth, 3000 hertz, this is a bandwidth, okay? I'm telling you we have two levels. I'm asking you to calculate the bit rate, okay? So just plug in the formula, you can find, so given given that if I have a bandwidth of 3000, the maximum bit rate you can get is actually 6000 bit per second, okay? So keep in mind, here, always we are looking, we are looking for high bit rate and with, with a, a minimum, minimum minimum amount of bandwidth because we don't have too much bandwidth you got what i'm saying so given a certain amount of bandwidth we always we are looking for different ways to maximize the bit rate okay so you can see in this example also here here i'm going to increase the number of levels so from two i'm going to increase it to four levels okay so you can see here i just i'm going to plug in here in this formula you can see i can get double I'm, I can get double the bit rate instead of 6,000, uh, it's going to be 12,000 bit per second. Okay. Uh, I give you another example here. In this example, I give you, uh, I give you the bit rate. 
I give you the bandwidth, and I'm asking you what is the signal levels we can have. Okay, so again, this is just you can just plug in here in this formula. So this is the bit rate two times the bandwidth times look look two of L, and then you can get L. So if you do the calculations, this is look this is look two of of L. Okay, equal this value. So in order to calculate the value of L, you can use the calculator to calculate it, or you know from from the log logarithmic if you have something like that. So actually L this L is actually equal to, to the bar of this one. So after you do the calculation, you can find, take a seat quickly, please. So after you do the calculation, you find that in order to get given this amount of bandwidth, in order to get this bit rate, the level number of levels should be 98.7, okay? Actually, there are two, two problems here. The first problem is number of levels cannot be fraction. It can't be fraction. Is that okay? This number one. Number two, as I told you before, there is a relation between number of levels. Number number of levels should be two to the power n. So number of levels l should be two to the power n. And n is actually how many bits we have here. For example, in this example, you can see here in this example, we have four levels and we have two bits here. So the four levels are actually two to the power of two. Okay, so so here you can see always. So what can we do here? So actually, it's not it's not pr 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 practically. Yes, the formula, the math, the math is giving me this number of le levels. But pr practically, I can I can't have this number of levels. I told you, number of levels. Number one, it can't be fraction. Number two, it has to be two to the power of n. Okay, so if you so in this case, I I'm gonna have two options. Either I get less, less number of levels or more number of levels. That's exactly what I did. So, so here, if I select 64, so, so here, this number is actually between 2 to the power 6 and 2 to the power 7. You got what I'm saying? It's some number here. So I can get the less or a greater one. Okay. So, so that's what I'm telling you here. If you, if you select 2 to the power 7, which is 128, if you select 128 levels, in this case, you are going to get 280, uh, uh, 280 kilobit per second instead, which is more than what, what I'm looking for, 265. The other option is you can, you can, you can, uh, I can get lower number of levels, 64 levels. In this case, I'm going to get 240 kilobit, which is less, less than this one. So what I want to tell you here, given this bandwidth, you can't you can't get the exact value here it can be uh, of a bit per second it can be greater or it can be less any questions here again this formula give me number of levels okay so practically <laughs> the man is a man practically i can't have this number okay because it is fraction because it's not two to the power n okay so the closest value to this one is two to the power six or two, two to the power seven. If I use two to the power six, okay, uh, uh, here, uh, so actually, uh, so this one, I'm gonna have less bandwidth than this one. If I use two to the power seven, I'm gonna get more bandwidth than this one, okay? Let's, let's now move to the second formula. The second formula is called the channel cap capacity, and this one for noisy channel. You, you, you need to <coughs> keep in mind, all the channels are noisy. Okay, so here the capacity or the bit maximum bit rate is actually the bandwidth times look to of one one plus signal to noise ratio. Okay, so what this formula is telling me uh, the bit rate. Okay, it depends on the bandwidth. This is exactly the same thing we we got before, but also it depends on the signal to noise ratio. Okay, so in other words. The, the more bandwidth you have, the more bit, bit rate you can get. The more signal to noise ratio, the more bandwidth you can, uh, sorry, the more uh, uh, bit, a bit per second or bit rate you can get, okay? So this is, so it's actually, yeah, this formula is somehow interesting because this formula is telling me, regardless how many levels of signal you have, 
the bit rate actually depends on the signal to noise ratio and bandwidth. Okay, so <laughs> so there is an approximation approximation to to this formula to this formula. There is an approximation, and this approximation I'm telling you if the signal to noise ratio is too high, so I can simply ignore the one. Okay, so it's going to be look to signal to noise ratio. And then you can use the uh, properties of uh, of lo logarithmic. So and in this case, it's going to be capacity equals the bandwidth times signal to noise ratio in decibel divided by three. You, you got what I'm saying? So keep in mind. So here, this is signal to noise ratio as a ratio. This one in decibel. You remember when I told you before that decibel is actually ten log ten of signal to noise ratio. Okay. So, and also you should understand this, this one is approximated value. This, this is only valid when the signal to noise ratio is too high because we ignore the one here, okay? <clears throat> Let's have some examples. Uh, we have a very interesting example here. We assume, um, we assume here, we have an extremely noisy channel, extremely noise. That means the signal to noise ratio is zero. Signal to noise ratio is zero. So you have too much noise. You almost don't have you almost don't have uh, a signal here because too much noise. Okay. Uh, so remember, I told you the signal to noise ratio is actually the energy of the signal divided by the energy of the noise. So when this one is close to zero, that means it's to have too much noise. Anyway, so for sure this is a very extreme example. So if I plug in here in this formula. In our formula, if I plug in, I will find the bit rate is zero, which makes sense. So if if you if we have too much noise, so the bit rate is gonna become zero. That means there is no communication. The bit rate is zero, that means there is no communication at all. Okay. I have another example here. I'm telling you in case of uh, a telephone telephone line, I give you the bandwidth here, I give you the signal to noise ratio. I'm asking you to calculate uh, the bit rate. You just plug in here in this formula, very straightforward. So if I plug in here, uh, this is what the bit rate I'm gonna get. So in this here, given this bandwidth and given this noise uh, signal to noise ratio, the maximum bit rate I can get is is uh, th uh, thirty-four thousand uh, eight hundred sixty bit per second. Okay, for sure. If you need more, if you need more bit rate, you have either to increase the bandwidth or increase the signal to noise ratio. Uh, let's have another example here. Uh, in this example, <clears throat> I give you the signal to noise ratio and they, I give you the bandwidth. So you have the bandwidth, it is here, but I give you the signal to noise ratio in decibel, not as a ratio, in decibel, not as a ratio. Okay. So, first of all, if you want to use this formula, if you want to use this formula, this the signal to noise ratio, it has to be a ratio not in decibel, okay? So you have to convert this one from decibel to a ratio and then use it. How can you do that? Yeah, very easy. If you look here, signal to noise ratio as a decibel in decibel is actually 10 log 10 signal to noise ratio as, as this is a ratio, okay? And this is decibel. So all what you can do here, you can just plug in here. This one is 36 and then you do the calculation. You can find, you can calcul calculate the signal to noise ratio this way. Okay, so once you, so th that's what you can do. Number one, you can convert because this formula, this one has to be a ratio. You can convert the decibel to a ratio, okay, as I did, did here. And then after that, you have the signal to noise ratio and you have the bandwidth. You can just plug in the formula and then you can calculate, you can calculate the, uh, uh, the bit rate, okay. What, there is one more thing here. You can use the approximated formula I explained to before. Yeah, so yeah, this is the approximated formula I told you about here. If I go back, yeah, this is the approximated formula. This one, this this approximated for formula should give you very good results. Why? Because, because the signal to noise ratio is too high. I told you here, we ignore the one, okay? Here, if you have, in this example, if you have, uh, this one almost, the signal to noise ratio here is almost 4,000. 4, so this is too high, 4,000. Comparing to one, I can ignore the one, okay? So anyway, so uh, here I'm gonna use this approximated formula here. In this case, I don't need to I don't need to convert the decibel to ratio. I can just take the decibel here, just plug in here, 
and then I can I do the calculation. If I do the calculation, as you see here, I'm gonna get exactly the same bit rate. Any questions? Conclusion, I have two formulas. This one here, here you have to use a ratio. Here you can use decibel, but you can only use this one when the signal to noise ratio is too high because I just ignored the one here in this formula, okay? If, if, if it is not, if the signal to noise is not high and I give you the signal to noise in decibel, in order to use this one, as, as I have shown in the example, you have to convert this one to a ratio, okay? Now, so now what I did, I explained two different formulas to calculate the bit rate. So which one I have to use, which one? Actually, we are gonna use both of them. How we are gonna use both of them? Very simple. So um, we are gonna use Shannon, we are gonna use Shannon to give me the bit rate. So Shannon is gonna give me the bit rate. But if you wanna know, if you wanna know L, if you wanna know how many levels you should you should have for the signal, in this, in this case, I'm gonna use in, in Nyquist. I'm gonna show now, I'm gonna show an example now how I'm gonna use the two formulas. One formula is gonna give me the bit rate, the other formula is gonna give me uh, the number of signal levels. Okay, that's what I'm gonna show here. So here, as you see here, yeah. Uh, so here in this example, I'm giving you the bandwidth. I'm giving you the signal to noise ratio. And then I'm gonna ask you two questions. Number one, what is the bit rate and what is the signal level? Okay, so for the bit rate, I'm gonna use Shannon for that. Yeah, just, just a straightforward uh, substitution here in this formula in Shannon to get, calculate the bit rate, okay? So I found this is the bit rate, okay? Now I'm asking you what is the signal level? So I can use this bit rate in the other formula, in the other formula by uh, Nyquist, okay? In order to get the level. However, you have to be careful here. This is the limit. This meter bit per second is the limit. Okay, so usually you are not you are not get, you are not gonna get this exact limit. So you have to be lower than this limit. So what I did here, I said, okay, so a formula is giving me six megabit per second, and this is the upper upper limit. Okay, for 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 so I'm gonna I'm gonna select something less than six. So I decided to select four. Okay, so I'm not gonna work exactly at six, so I'm gonna work at something lower than four because this is the limit. So I just, I'm gonna put, someone else can select five. I'm totally fine as long as it is lower than six, should be okay. Some Someone can select three, okay? Because this is a limit. Okay, so at least I know the limit. So now I'm now I'm, I'm gonna say, okay, this is the limit. So I, I, I'm gonna work on four megabit per second. So I'm gonna block it in here in order to get L. Okay. Any questions? So again, what I did here in this in this section, I explained two different formulas to calculate the bit rate, okay, uh, as a function in the bandwidth or proportional to the bandwidth. Okay. Also, I told you uh, we have we are going to use both of them. One of them is going to be used to calculate the bit rate. The other one is going to be used to calculate the level signal level. Okay. The last the last thing I have in this chapter is actually some definitions. I already explained some of them in chapter one. Uh, for the uh, performance. The first one here, I want to explain bandwidth and the throughput. I want you to understand the difference between them. Bandwidth is somehow tricky. Why? Because if, if I ask you what is the bandwidth for a signal, so actually, actually, as I explained to before, bandwidth for a signal is the range of frequencies, maximum minus the minimum frequency, okay? The range of frequencies contained in a signal. This is when I say this is a bandwidth for a signal. But when I tell you what is the bandwidth for a channel, so actually this can give me the frequency the channel can pass. Okay, so bandwidth for a channel, so the range of frequencies the channel can pass. Uh, 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 for uh, the bandwidth for a signal is actually the band for bandwidth for a signal is actually giving me the uh, the range of frequencies in this signal. Okay. Uh, the bandwidth can be measured in hertz or it can also be measured in bit per second, bit per second, okay? Uh, so now I'm gonna move to throughput. Throughput is the speed, right? Bit per second as well. So how throughput is different from bandwidth? You should understand, very important thing. So bandwidth means if I there is a cable for a connection, I'm gonna tell you the maximum you can get from this cable is for example five megabit per second. This is the maximum. Okay. What you what actually you are gonna get is actually the throughput. 
So it's a little I don't, I don't, it's a little bit confusing. I don't want to be, be confused. Okay. Again, bandwidth bit per second. Okay. Throughput also bit per second. What is the difference between them? Throughput is, is the actual thing. This is what you are going to get actually. Bandwidth is actually what's, what the connection can, can give you in speed. So, so why they are different? Why is the throughput sh shouldn't e exactly equal to the bandwidth? Okay. There are many factors. One of the factors, Okay, is that maybe the computer is not is not fast enough in, in processing the information. That's why you need to reduce the speed. Okay, so here, always the throughput is less than the bandwidth. You should understand the bandwidth is actually a potential measure for a link. So this link potentially, it can give you a certain speed. Throughput is the actual measurement. This is how fast you can send the data actually, okay? I give you one example here to understand what I want to say here. For example, here I'm telling you uh, a network with a bandwidth of 10 megabit per second. So you have here 10 megabit per second. Again, that doesn't mean you are going to get 10, 10 mega. This is the maximum, okay? Because there are other factors. Maybe the computer is not fast enough to, to send to this very high rate. Maybe there are other other factors like the, the, there is a congestion congestion in the network or other uh, or some other factors. Okay, so here I'm telling you uh, in this example I'm gonna transmit twelve thousand frames per minute. This is the number of frames I'm gonna transmit. Every frame is actually ten thousand bits. So if I do the calculation here, as you see, we have twelve thousand frames per per minute. In order to convert to second, I'm going to divide it by 60. So these two are going to give you actually number of frames per second. Number of frames per second. Every frame has 10,000 10, bits. So in total, we're going to have 2 megabit per second. In total, 2 megabits. So, so that's, what, that's, that's what I need, or that's what I get in this scenario. So although, although the bandwidth is thin, but actually, what I'm going to get actually is only 10, 2 megabit per second. Is that okay? Again, it's, I know it's a little bit confusing. Bandwidth is bit per second. Okay. Throughput also is bit per second. But you should understand the difference between them. Okay. Throughput is actually what actually you get. What you what, what the actual the actual speed you get. Bandwidth is actually the capability of the cable. The, key, the cable is capable of giving you this, 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 this bit per second. Actually, you are going to get less than this one because there are other restrictions. Like, for example, as I told you, the computer is not, is not fast enough, for example. The next one here, delay. I think I in chapter one, I explained the delay. I told you there are different reasons for delay, like processing, processing delay. A queue. I told you when the packet has to be stored, it's for some time in the queue. Also, we have the propagation time or propagation delay, transmission delay, as I told you before. The transmission, the transmission, transmission is a delay that okay is actually the size of the message divided by the bandwidth. For example, I have here one mega, one, one mega, one megabyte, and the bandwidth is actually one one megabyte per second. Okay, so that means it's gonna take one second to transmit one mega one megabyte. Okay, so this is this is the transmission time. It's the message size divided by the bandwidth of the channel. There is another delay I told you before about the propagation delay for the signal to move from one point to another point. There is a delay. The propagation delay is actually the distance divided by the propagation speed. Okay. Uh, so if you add all these delays together, this is gonna create a delay. When you transmit a packet, the packet will be delivered after a certain delay, okay? I give you some uh, numerical example here to understand the idea here. So here I'm giving you, I'm asking you to calculate the propagation time or propagation delay. If the distance, I give you the distance, this is the distance here. Also, I give you the propagation speed. Okay, this is just you plug in, you plug in the formula here. In this formula, the propagation time is actually the distance divided by the propagation speed. Okay, uh, so I just plug in here, I found it's gonna take 50 milliseconds. So, so if you have, very interesting thing here, if you have a cable and this cable is 12,000 kilometers, 12,000 kilometers, very, very long cable. The signal for sure, 
the, because the propagation uh, speed is very high, the signal, the signal can move from the beginning of the cable to the end in just 50 milliseconds. It takes only 50 milliseconds to move it from the beginning to the end, okay? Because the speed is too, too high speed, okay? The other one here, uh, and this is also very well, okay? So this is also very interesting example. So here, uh, I I give you it's is is exactly exactly the same the same scenario here, but here I'm gonna add one more one more delay. I'm gonna I'm gonna add here. Uh, I'm I'm telling you using using the same the same the same case here. Okay, using twelve thousand kilometer and this is speed. Okay, now I'm telling you I wanna transmit a message and this message is actually two point five kilo kilo uh, kilobyte. And, and this is actually the bandwidth of the network, one, one gigabit per second, okay? So I told you, we can now you can calculate the transmission delay or the transmission time. The transmission time is the size, the size of the message divided by the transmission speed, okay? Or the bandwidth. So here, this one is one, one giga, gigabit per second. You know, one giga means 10, 10 to the bar of nine. 10 to the bar of nine is one giga, okay? So this one is one giga. A bit per second, and here this one is the message because this one in bits, this one also has to be in bits. So what I did here is two thousand five hundred times eight. Why you multiply it by eight? Because this one they have to be the same. This one in bytes, this one has to be in bytes. This one has to be in bits because the bandwidth is already in bits. This one is in bits. I have to multiply the byte here, the byte here by eight to to calculate it. Okay. So if you see here something very interesting, I told you the total latency or the total delay is actually the submission of several things. But sometimes only one thing may be dominant, dominant, okay? Much bigger than the other thing, like in this example here. So in this example, as you see here, I calculate the propagation delay. It was only 50, it was 50 millisecond. But when I calculate the transmission time, I found that 0.02 millisecond. You got what I'm saying? So in this case, I can ignore, I can ignore the transmission time and I can only take the propagation, propagation time. Okay. Uh, in, in the total, when you add everything together, so this one will be more do dominant. The reason why why this one is too small, this one is too small actually because I'm I'm transmitting a small message, a small message over a very large bandwidth, okay? So we can have another scenario. In this scenario, it's, okay, I'm gonna transmit a big message, like a bigger message here over a, a small bandwidth. You got what I'm saying? So what I wanna say, the transmission time, it depends on how big is the message and what is the bandwidth, okay? So what I did here, I considered another situation where, where the message is very, if very long message, and also the speed here, the bandwidth is much less than the other one. So I found here, the situation now is gonna be completely different. You, you are gonna see based on these numbers, the transmission time is gonna be 40 seconds, which is much greater than this one. So in here, if you wanna calculate the delay, so the transmission time is gonna be uh, 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 dominating. You got what I'm saying? This is not the case here for sure, because what happened here, this one was too small, because I have I have I I had a lot of bandwidth and the message was too small. That's why I got a very small number here. Okay. But this is not the case here. Okay, I think we can start the quiz now. I'm, I, I'm gonna change this one next time. <laughs>